Good morning. This is Barry Bryson thanking you for joining me for another five good minutes. Uh, as we said yesterday, we're beginning a series called Encountering Jesus, and we're beginning that series by talking about Jesus' encounters with women in John's gospel. And so today we're in John chapter 2, Jesus and his mother at the wedding of Cana in Galilee. We know so much about Jesus' relationship with his mother uh, through the gospels of Mark, um, Luke, and John. We don't really know much about her at all from the Gospel of Matthew. Luke tells us so much about the birth of Jesus, and he tells it to us through Mary's eyes, even the upbringing of Jesus in chapters 1 and 2. When we meet Mary, she's maybe 14 years old at the oldest. She's betrothed but not yet wed. Uh, and we see when she's told that she's going to bear the Son of God, uh, her innocence but also her fierce intelligence this is a woman who knows the word and can quote the word, even though she was certainly illiterate, her strength for the part that she's about to play. And once she gives birth to that child, uh, we're told by Luke on more than one occasion that she has a treasuring heart and a pondering heart. She's keeping these things in her heart and she's thinking about them and what they mean. We also know that it's hard for her. Uh, when Jesus is 12 years old, and she's maybe 26, and he stays behind in Jerusalem. Um, you know, we see how hard that is for her and how upsetting and how assertive she is. We'll look at that passage later on in our, in our series. But we continue to see how difficult it is for her and the tension that they, that they have as a, as a mother and an adult son in chapter 2. Let me read the passage to you. John chapter 2, verse 1. And on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited and his disciples to the wedding. And when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, and I'm going to translate directly from the Greek, woman, what is that to me and to you? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now, there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification containing 20 or 30 gallons each. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said, now draw some out and take it to the head of the feast. And they took it to him. And when the head of the feast tasted the water, which had now become wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when men have drunk freely, then that which is poor, but you kept the good wine until now. This is the beginning of Jesus' signs, which Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. And after this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. Well, when we introduced the Gospel of John, we said there are seven signs in John, and this is the first one. And John tells us in chapter 20 that he has chosen these seven signs that we might believe by experiencing Jesus as fully human and fully divine. And we see the full divinity of Jesus on display in him changing water to wine, uh, a, a, a unique um, miracle that is only preceded by Moses turning the Nile River into blood. So there's so many connections there, but changing the molecular structure of a liquid is something that no one else has done except for that one time when God did it through Moses' staff. And his disciples believed and he manifested his glory. But we see his humanity on full display because he's a guy with a mom. He's a guy at a wedding whose mom comes to him and says they don't have any beverage. To which Jesus replies, how is that our business? And his mother doesn't, doesn't even answer him. You know, she just says to the, to the, 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 the uh, servants there, whatever he tells you to do, do that. And then she walks away. It's unclear what she expects him to do. But we do know this. She expected him to fix it. And Jesus didn't think it was his responsibility to fix it. And he told her so. We get to know Jesus not only as a man in this passage, but guys, we get to know him as a guy. As a man who has a mother who expects him to do things that he doesn't expect himself to. Uh, to do. He doesn't see it as his responsibility. But verse 12 is key. Jesus, after this event, takes his mom and, and his brothers and, and his family and his disciples to 
to, to Capernaum and they stay there. Jesus is the head of household and as such has responsibilities to his family and particularly to his mother. Responsibilities that he will keep even from the cross in John chapter 19. And so we see that he loves his mom and he does what she asked him to do. But his relationship with his mother as an adult son was not that easy. Thank you for joining me for five good minutes with the word as we encounter Jesus uh, and he comes to the rescue of his mother in chapter two. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the woman at the well. Thank you for joining me.